Hey guys, it's Nana Chan Reap here. Uh, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, in today's video, I had something completely different planned. Uh, but given some issues I've had over the past few days and few weeks of reefing, I thought I would share my experience, uh, some of the errors that I've been making in my reefing journey. Um, I don't class myself as an advanced uh, reefer. Um, I've only been in the hobby two years. Um, so there's a lot of people out there that know a lot more than me and I do rely on them um, for information and help and guidance through uh, my reefing. So I want to start by saying a big thank you to Headley's Reef. He has been a massive help over the last few days. Um, he's really sort of taught me through it. I mean, some of the stuff I've been going through on this tank has, has just my, had my head spinning. Um, so it's really nice to speak to somebody uh, level-headed um, and just willing to, to talk you through it and uh, go through from the start as to, to where you started going wrong and, and how to get back on track. Uh, so massive shout out to Headley's Reef. Do check him out on Instagram. You're a top bloke. So I'm not really sure where to begin. Uh, you probably remember in last week's video, I did show you a, a bleached out and stripped um, millipora. That was sort of the beginning of me starting to worry about the tank um, and that did spur me on to get an ICP test. I will show you the ICP test later. Um, there are some things that have been going on that I've been unaware of, some due to um, test kits that I've been using not working correctly and not giving me the correct results. So I've got a sort of work out how I'm going to go about changing up my testing routine. Um, I might start even using two test kits, two different. So I'm, I'm currently using Red Sea Pro um, and the results they're giving aren't the results that I got from the ICP test. So what I will probably do in, in the future is, is use that Red Sea test kit, get some new tests, uh, but also double check it with say a, a Salafert test kit. Um, so that's one thing I'm going to do um, moving forward. But yes, I mean, as I say, the, the first issue was when the, the millie started, um, started stripping. That was my, my first concern. So that's when I started looking at the tank and looking at it in a bit more depth. Um, Tuesday just gone, I lost another coral. I had a strawberry shortcake in there. It'd been in there three, four months, doing really well, fully based out all over the rocks. Um, I came up on Tuesday, looked at the tank Tuesday morning, and it looked like this. It wasn't a good site, it wasn't a pretty site, um, and I really didn't know what was going on with the tank. Um, but there are a lot of changes that I've been making to this tank that have brought me to this point, and I can sort of see the error of my ways now. Um, so, so yeah, as I say, I mean, this is educational for, for me, as well as you guys, because I'm making the mistakes and you're seeing them happen, and hopefully it should uh, stop you making these mistakes in the future. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll start from the beginning. I'll show you exactly where everything began. So it really started when I first installed the Clarisy. Uh, this was the first part of the issue that I'm going through with the tank. When I installed the Clarisy, my nutrients were good. I was at 10 parts per million of nitrate. I was at 0.03 parts per million of phosphate. I installed the Clarisy and it has stripped everything out of the tank to the point where the skimmer wasn't skimming anymore. It was just there was, there was nothing coming out in the collection cup. Um, so that was, that was the first issue. Um, my nitrates at that point, I mean, I installed that on April the 25th, I think it was, at the back end of April anyway. Uh, and from that point till, till now, it has brought my nitrates down from 10, 8 to 10 parts per million to, to absolute zero, um, which isn't good. I mean, that's, that's one problem I'm going through with the nitrates and phosphate coming down. I mean, phosphates I want down anyway, but nitrates I, I sort of want that because the, the corals feed on it. So from having low nutrients in the tank, my SPS sort of stopped growing and started bleaching, started getting a lot lighter. I mean, I'll show you some, some of the corals in there and they're, they're a lot lighter than they used to be. The colour depth in there isn't nearly as good as it used to be. So the coral stopped growing. I was still dosing the same amount of alkalinity per day and my alkalinity started rising. It went from, I like to keep it at about nine and it started slowly rising over the course of a week, two weeks to 9.6. Low nutrients, high alkalinity don't mix with SPS. So the corals are super stressed out at this point. So that was the first issue. Um, it probably didn't help matters that I when I installed the Clarisy, I immediately cleaned out everything in the sump, absolutely everything. I took the whole sump out, cleaned it out, um, bathed it in vinegar, uh, and gave it a full clean. Um, there was crap in there, there was all sorts of stuff in there, 
uh, that was probably feeding the tank and, and breaking down into nit uh, nitrates. So a few days later, I decided to mix up the flow in the tank. Um, given I had low nutrients in there, I didn't have as, as much polyp extension and I put it down to the flow in the tank rather than the nutrients in the tank. So I decided to, I put, basically I put, I put everything back to how it was with regards to flow. That was the first thing I did when I noticed the issue um, and I spoke to uh, Headley's Reef about it. He said, look, move the flow back immediately. That's the first thing you need to do. So I've moved, I, I had this here, this, um, this jar, I moved down here and it was pumping direct flow into these corals, which was a, a stupid idea. I don't, I don't know what was going through my head at that point, but the corals, the, the SPS like good flow, they like good random flow and they like good, uh, good movement, but they don't like direct flow. And that I'm putting down to the main reason I lost the strawberry shortcake. If I move this closer to the tank, you'll see exactly what I mean. I apologize about the reflections. I can't really uh, work this any other way. Um, so the, you can see the dryer set up here now and it's pushing it above the SPS and, and creating some turbulence in the water. I had it set here and it was pushing direct flow right into, into here. And you can see this is where the straw, I've not removed it from the tank, it's still in there. This is where the strawberry shortcake is and it was getting absolutely blasted by direct flow. And that was probably the, the stupidest thing I could have done within this tank because this one's taking a hit as well. This little colony here uh, is starting to get um, a bit of stripping on the tips um, where it was where it's been hit by the direct flow. So that was that's the first thing I've done. I've moved the dry back up, reverted it back to its original flow pattern, um, and yeah, that's that's I, that needed to be done immediately. So here are the ICP test results I got from Triton. Um, you can see the first one that stands out is copper. It's not a major problem. I mean, it's, it's 2.18 parts per billion of copper. You can see it here. Um, sorry, 2.28 parts per billion of copper. I can only put that down to my own negligence. And that is the tools that I'm using to pick out frags and, and to put in the tank are uh, stainless steel. There is a little bit of surface rust on those implements um, and I should never be using them, but I'm too lazy to get myself some better. I mean, I, I could use plastic and I should be using plastic equipment um, and I'm not sure why I'm not. So they are never going back in the tank. That's, that's one thing that I've, I've stopped doing completely because uh, that I can't be having any copper in the tank. Um, the second part we've got here is uh, calcium and magnesium. I did mention that the test kits that I'm using are the Red Sea Pro test kits and they are not showing the correct results. So that I'm going to address today. That will be me going to the, the, my local fish shop, uh, buying some, some additional test kits to test against. So I can, I can test one with Red Sea Pro and I can test one with say Salifer or a, another test kit. Um, so they'll be, they'll be addressed over the course of the next week. I'll slowly, slowly bring those up. Um, another one is iodine. Iodine levels, they should be at uh, six parts per million. They are zero, absolutely zero. I do dose iodine, but I dose my iodine based on my calcium uptake. My calcium uptake is more than I'm dosing, so I'm not dosing enough calcium, therefore I'm not dosing enough of the trace elements, iodine, potassium, iron and the bioactive elements that I use from Red Sea. I'm really thinking about moving away from Red Sea. I'm not gonna do it now because I feel like that would be too much stress on the corals, um, but I'm thinking about moving to a different method uh, of dosing uh, so I can dose everything individually. I mean, it, the, the stuff that I'm dosing here, you can see is you've got four parts. So you've got iron, potassium, sorry, iodine, potassium, iron, and bioactive elements. All of those have got different trace elements within them. So I'm thinking about going to maybe ATI or Triton where I can individually dose based on the actual uptake and looking at some, some, some better test kits uh, for that. There are a few more things within the ICP test results that I do need to address, a few minor elements, but I plan on doing progressive water changes on this tank to bring everything back in level. With regards to the copper, uh, the iodine, I'm dosing iodine to get that back in level um, quite quickly, three or four days. Um, but with regards to everything else, 
water changes will help me the most. I'm going to do 20% this week, 20% next week, and 20% the week after. Um, that should bring most of the things back in line. Uh, I mean, the main issue I addressed, which was the flow, now I've got to sort of address the parameters and water changes are going to be my best friend through this. I don't want to do it too fast because I don't want to stress the corals out even more, but I will be doing water changes over the next three weeks to, to get rid of 60% of the water in there. With regards to nutrients, I am starting up. I didn't want to do this, but I am starting to dose nitrates again. I will be getting that set up today. Um, I've got something else um, that I want to set up today, actually, so I'll probably set that up tomorrow. Um, I'll show you what else I want to set up at the end of the video, so do stick around. Um, so yeah, with regards to uh, nutrients, I will be dosing nitrates. My phosphates are good. I'm happy with my phosphates. It's just nitrates I'm really not happy with, so they'll be addressed. Um, so yeah, water changes and new dosing. Uh, I'm going to up the dosing on the calcium and magnesium to get them back in level. So yeah, it's, it's going to be a long old road to recovery, but do stick around on this channel um, and I will keep you we updated weekly as to how it is going. So this brings me to the end of the video and to introduce the newest upgrade to the Red Sea Reefer 250. Uh, GHL were kind enough to send across the Proflux 4 for me to test out and to, to add to the tank. I've been after one of these for quite some time so I'm really excited to get this in there. This will help me keep the basics of the tank absolutely stable whilst I'm adjusting the rest of the parameters to get them back in line. Uh, so I really, I'm not going to waste any time in getting this in there. This is going to be installed today. Um, if you want to see the progress of the updates on this Proflux, head over to my Instagram. I'm going to be keeping daily, daily posts on, on the progression of this, uh, this Proflux. And uh, I'm really excited to, to use some of the features uh, on this system. So thanks for watching, guys. I really do appreciate it. Sorry it was a long one today. Uh, it was quite a long one today. Um, and it was a bit of a depressing video, um, but, but honestly, I just wanted to get it out there. I mean, I'm, I'm not the sort of person to hide my mistakes uh, within reefing. Um, you guys on Instagram know that I, if I make an error, um, I'm the first one to put my hands up and say, look, this is what I'm doing. And it's just to help you guys in the future. I mean, if anything, it's going to stop somebody making the same mistakes as me um, and to stop them losing the corals that I'm losing. So if you've enjoyed the video today, uh, do hit that like button, do subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be keeping weekly updates on, on the progression of this tank and hopefully it will be bouncing back anytime soon. Um, so yeah, have a great weekend guys. Thank you again for watching.